prelude to the First Dornish War came during the last days of Aegon's conquest, Queen Rhaenys Targaryen was sent to conquer Dawn in her brother's name. Instead of confronting the Dornish spearmen guarding the prince's pass in the Red Mountains, Rhaenys flew over the pass on her dragon Moraxis, the Vaith and God's Grace. There she found the castle was abandoned, continuing her journey to Planky Town, where only women and children remained. At Sunspear, to see the house Martell, she found Maria Martell, the old princess of Dawn, waiting for her in her abandoned castle. Maria defied Rhaenys, stating that they would neither fight nor kneel. Rhaenys would warn the Princess of Dawn that the Targaryens would return with fire and blood. But Mira simply replies, You may burn us, my lady, but you will not bend us, break us, or make us bow. This is Dawn. You are not wanted here. Return at your peril. Rhaenys departed, but the Targaryens subsequently made no direct attempt to conquer the harsh deserts of Dawn, instead focusing on consolidating their main conquest in the heart of Westeros. As such, Dawn was the only kingdom not to be conquered by Aegon in its initial conquest. First Dawnish War began in 4 AC, when Queen Rhaenys returned to Dawn, bringing fire and blood as she had promised the Princess Myra two years earlier. Top Moraxis, she descended from the skies above Planky Town, setting it ablaze. The whole mouth of the Greenblood River was choked with smoke that could be seen as far as Sunspear. The people of the floating town jumped into the river to escape the dragon fire, with fewer than 100 dying. Despite the power of Moraxis, the human toll was minimal. During Rhaenys' raids, Oris Baratheon, the bastard half-brother of Aegon, also led 1,000 knights up the Boneway, while Aegon personally marched through the Prince's Pass with 30,000 men, with many High Lords joining him. Confidence was so high, Lord Harlan Tyrell, Warden of the South, thought they had more than enough power to crush the Dornish, even without Aegon and Beleriand. In a way, Harlan Tyrell was correct. There were much superior force, but that theory would never be tested. Like years prior, the Dornish never offered battle. Instead, they withdrew and hid as Aegon neared, burning their crops and poisoning the wells. By the time Aegon's host reached the Dornish Shands, supplies were already running low. He split his force, himself turning eastward to besiege Skyreach, while Harlan Tyrell had himself to Hellholt. With winter approaching, Aegon hoped the blaze and Dornish heat would lessen, but Dawn proved unrelenting. By the time Harlan Tyrell reached Hellholt, he had lost a quarter of his men, only to find the castle empty. Oris Baratheon found themselves in a similar situation. The horses found the steep, twisting paths of the mountains difficult. The Dornish rained boulders from above, something the Stormlanders never saw coming. The hit and run attacks slowly dwindled the Stormland numbers. At a crossing of the River Will, Dornish archers ambushed the column as they were crossing the bridge. As Oris ordered the retreat, a rock fort cut them off. With no escape, the Stormlanders were massacred. Only Oris and Lords Worth the Ransom were spared, but found themselves captive of the savage mountain lords. The king had much more success than his lords. He took the castle of Skyreach and won Ironbrun after a short siege. Lord Tolland of Ghost Hill sent forth a champion to battle the king in single combat. Aegon accepted and slew the man, but discovered later that he was not the champion, but the lord's fool. A distraction when the lord himself fled. When Aegon descended upon Sunspear, only to find Miriam Tower had also vanished. As just his sister Rhaenys stood before him, after burning Planky Town, Rhaenys had taken Lemonwood, Spotwood and Stinkwater, but only finding old women and children, with an actual enemy nowhere to be found. Even in Sunspit, those who remained would not admit any knowledge of the location of the Dornish Lords or the Princess. Aegon could only declare victory. Lord Rosby was named Castilian of Sunspear and Warden of the Sands. Castilians were also named for the rest of the land and the castles captured. Aegon and his army then began the long march back to King's Landing. Barely reached the capital before Dornish spearmen appeared like ghosts. Skyreach, Ironwood, Tor and Ghost Hill were retaken within two weeks. All of Aegon's men were put to death. Only Lord Tyrell remained at the Hellhole. When news of the fall of Sunspear reached Hellhole, Lord Tyrell set off across the sands with the intent to take Faith, march east across the river and take Sunspear. But somewhere east of Hellhole, Tyrell and his whole army vanished. The war would drag on for another seven years. However, after 6 AC, the fighting descended into a series of atrocities, raids and retributions broken up by long periods of inactivity, dozens of short-lived truces, murders and assassinations. In 7 AC, Oros Baratheon, among other lords who had been taken captive, were ransomed back to King's Landing, but on his return, Turn it being found, the sore hand of each man had been cut off so they could never take up arms against Dawn again. As a reprisal, Aegon on Balerion descended on the mountain fortress of Will, reducing most of their keeps and watchtowers to molten stone. The next year, in 8 AC, Dornish raiders crossed the Sea of Dawn on ships, attacking towns and on the south shore of the Cape Wrath, and set fires that spread through the rainwood. Aegon would not allow this to go unanswered. Later that year, Visenya Targaryen appeared in the skies of Dawn, setting Vagar loose on Sunspear, Lemmerwood, Ghost Hill, and the Tor. In 9 AC, Visenya returned and burnt Sandstone, Vave and Hellhole. This time, she was accompanied by the king himself. The Dornish response came the next year, when Lord Fowler led a force into the Reach, moving fast, burning a dozen villages. They captured the castle of Nightsong before the lords of the Reach realised what was happening. When a counter-attack was mounted, the castles were found to be empty and the occupants taken captive, be ransomed. The king flew to Highgarden to take counsel with his warden of the south. The young lord Theo Tyrell was against the idea of another invasion after the fate of his father. Once again, the king unleashed the power of his dragons against the Dornish. Aegon himself fell upon Skyreach. Visenya and Vega 
Jaeger brought fire and blood to Starfall, the seat of House Dane, and Rhaenys and Maraxxus returned to Hellholt, but tragedy struck. As Maraxxus flew above Hellholt, a scorpion was fired from one of the castle towers. A yard-long bolt hit the Queen's dragon in the right eye. Maraxxus did not die instantly, crashing to the ground, destroying the tower and curtain wall of the castle. It's not known if Rhaenys Targaryen outlived Maraxxus, and remains a heavily debated topic. Some say she fell from Maraxxus to her death, some that she was crushed by Maraxxus on impact. Some claim she survived, only to die a slow, torturous death in the dungeons of the Ollers. All that can be said is Rhaenys Targaryen, a sister and beloved wife to King Aegon the Conqueror, died in 10 AC. The following two years would become known as the Dragon's Wrath. Every castle in Dawn was burnt by Balerion and Vhagar. The Dornish lords hid away, even that did not provide safety. Lord Fowler, Lord Vaith, Lady Tolland, and four successive lords of Hellhot were murdered, one after the other, but the Dornish repaid blood with blood. Lord Collington of Griffin's Roost was killed whilst hunting. Lord Mertens of Mistwood poisoned with his whole household by a cast of Dornish wine. Lord Fell was smothered in a brothel in King's Landing. The royal family were not exempt. The king was attacked three times and would have fallen twice if not for his guard. Queen Visenya was set upon at night in King's Landing. Two of her escorts were killed before Visenya cut the men down herself with her Valerian steel sword, Dark Sister. Tyne did what dragons could not and in 13 AC, Mira Martell died. Her son Nymore became Lord of Sunspear and Prince of Dawn at age 60. His health was already in decline. Nymore did not have the appetite for further bloodshed. His first act was to send a delegation and a skull of the dragon Maraxis to offer Aegon peace terms. He sent his own daughter and heir, Daria, to lead the delegation. The offer faced fierce opposition. Queen Visenya declared no peace without submission, and much of the king's council agreed. Oris Baratheon, bitter towards Dawn, suggested they send Daria Martell back, missing a hand, much like he was. Aegon would not hear such proposals. Daria had come as an envoy under a banner of peace, and vowed no harm would come to her under his care. King Aegon was also wary of the bloodshed, but agreeing to a peace without submission was tantamount to saying his beloved sister and wife Rhaenys had died for nothing. The council feared it could spark rebellion, as the Reach and Stormlands had suffered greatly and would never forgive. The king was at the point of refusing the Dornish offer of peace. It was only when any chance of peace was lost, Princess Daria presented the king with a letter from her father, telling the king the letter was for his eyes alone. Aegon wrote the letter stone-faced on the Iron Throne. When he rose, his hands were dripping with blood. He burned the letter and never spoke of it again. That night, he mounted Balerion and flew alone to the Targaryen ancestral home in Dragonstone. He returned to the Aegon Fort the next morning and agreed to the terms of peace offered by Nymore. Only two people ever knew the truth, Aegon and Prince Nymore. The First Dornish War lasted from 4 AC to 13 AC. Mira Martell had done what Harren the Black, two kings, and Torrhen Stark couldn't. She withstanded Aegon and his dragons. However, north of the Red Mountains, her tactics were scorned and term, Dornish Courage, became a mocking name for cowardice. The Dornish War would be Aegon the Conqueror's last war. It would be no mean to be the last war with the Dornish.